and welcome to another episode of the Fantasy Writers Toolshed. I'm your host, Richie Billing, and in this episode, I reflect upon my experiences as a lawyer and discuss a few different ways to apply law-related issues to your stories. And the main aim of doing this is to hopefully give you some unique and interesting ideas for creating characters and well building and plots and creating conflict in your stories. I thought it'd be quite interesting and quite helpful to share my experiences of seeing and helping people recover from traumatic incidents and injuries because that was what I was essentially doing as a lawyer. Helping people get back on their feet. And so often these things can be brushed over in fantasy books. Like someone, for example, could lose an arm in a battle, but it'd be fine, you know what I mean? They won't be any change in their personality. They'll be the same wise cracking John. You know, it's just uh, accidents and injuries can have massive effects and repercussions, not just on the individual, but on the people around them. And it's intensified in fantasy settings, I think, as well. So when I was thinking about discu- uh, discussion points for this episode, I really did get lost in some... I, I began to realise just how much potential there is for writers to inject conflict in the stories and really interesting angles to their worlds as well. Before we dive in, just a, a reminder to keep up to date with the latest episodes to subscribe or follow the show. And if you really enjoy what we do and you want to support us, please share this episode on social media or with anyone you think may be interested. If you'd like us to do more regular episodes, maybe weekly episodes, and learn more about fantasy writing in the process, check out our Patreon page. You can find a range of different classes, books and guides, as well as interviews, all focused on the fantasy genre. And you can also join our writing community through Patreon too, where you can find beta readers for your short stories and chapters. And you can even join weekly writing groups which with people meeting up virtually from all around the world and all devoted to helping each other achieve their writing goals. The links for everything there are in the description. Now it's time to explore writing fantasy from a lawyer's perspective. So far on the podcast, I've had opportunities to interview lots of brilliant experts on all different kinds of things like psychology, sociology, folklore and history. And it occurred to me the other day when lost in one of my daily daydreams that I hadn't explored my own experiences as a lawyer on the show. So just to give you a bit of background information, um, I studied law at university and then for about five years after that worked as a lawyer. Uh, representing people who've been screwed over by their employers. So it ranged from people suffer from things like industrial deafness and vibration white finger and nasty injuries at work, people falling through roofs and breaking their legs and stuff like that, to people who sadly contracted fatal diseases like cancer from working with things like asbestos and these incidents were all caused by the the job and the unsafe practices that were happening. And basically through no fault of their own, they've suffered harm. And I love representing people and helping them. But I, in the end, I fell out of love with the job because the industry's changed a lot. And I just didn't really enjoy it anymore. But I do miss working with people and helping them with their legal problems. In a roundabout way, I'm still doing that now. I've I've found a job that helps me do that. But when I was working as a lawyer and I realised that I didn't really want to carry on doing it, it was at that time that I fell in love with writing and I took the plunge, quit my job, uh, gave writing a go and I never looked back. So in my writing, I often draw upon things that I've experienced in my legal days. Um, such as intense factory settings, the types of work that people do, ultimately the risks of doing certain tasks and roles and the consequences when things go wrong. And I found in my writing that utilising these things has allowed me to create quite unique and unusual settings and uh, injecting 
the lives of characters with conflict and turmoil. And as we know, conflict can always make for a more interesting read. So today I just basically wanted to go over a few writing related things from a lawyer's perspective. And I think these particularly relate to world building and creating characters and as well as a bit of plot and conflict. And I hope as we explore them, you find some inspiration and ideas for your own stories and worlds. Now, as a, a lawyer, I, I pre- predominantly dealt with accidents and injuries and industrial diseases. So I think a great place to start is to consider the impact that these things can have on a person and their life as a whole. And I always think it's helpful to look at the harm inflicted in an accident as a bit of a a spectrum. Uh, And on one end, we have the minor or the trivial injuries, such as bumps and bruises or sprained ankles. And then the other end, we've got fatal injuries, which obviously the worst kind, people losing their lives. And just shy of that, we've got probably life-changing ones like amputations or brain damage. It's important to appreciate that in many cases, an injury of any severity is going to cause some level of disruption to a person's life. And when we start to talk about things like disruption, from a writer's perspective, that means conflict. And as we know, conflict fuels stories. So I, I, when I was thinking about these things and I was sort of began to appreciate just how much I had used them in my, in my, stories particularly short stories yeah it all began to click into place it's like yeah this is actually a brilliant source of conflict because i don't there's not many people i know <laughs> i don't think anyone um who can afford not to work um obviously you can claim benefits and stuff but to get by in life you generally have to work and if we look at uh, medieval fantasy settings which people needed to work in order to survive they needed food to do that they would maybe farm um or barter goods or sell goods or whatever and if you suffer an injury as we'll see when uh, we consider some examples this can have a massive massive effect on not on just on your life but on the people who are around you who may depend on you so i just want to look at something simple like a sprained ankle so imagine we have a character called Hida who works as a farmhand. He gets paid five copper coins a day, which all gets spent feeding his six young children and his wife and himself. His wife, Mirella, works too, but only part-time, and he just sprained ankle. means he can't work for a couple of weeks, can't put any pressure on it, so he can't get out in the fields. And as a result, he loses out on 50 copper coins, and he needs to pay the rent. The, the, the rent is a weekly fee and he can't pay it. and he's being threatened with eviction if he can't pay it. He's got a very nasty bastard landlord, which I'm sure many of us have anyway. So the only option he has is to turn to an unsavory money lender to pay his weekly rent. Otherwise, the, all his family are going to be homeless. The interest rates are ridiculously high for him to ever repay the debt and all of a sudden, Kida is forced to do a bit of work for the loan shark. And there we have what I think is, is the potential for a half-decent story, all from an accident at work. Kida's pain in his ankle in the fields. Bang, conflict. And look at the ripple effect that's had. Um, now, can you imagine that same situation, but with a more severe injury? Let's say an amputated arm. Or even Hida losing his life in an accident. He might have been kicked in the head by a horse, for example. What would then happen to Mirella and the children? And I, th- I think when you start looking at these situations and you have to help people like work out how much money they've earned and stuff like that, um, you realise just how finely balanced people's lives are, myself included. And if something like an accident and an injury sets those spinning plates that are wobbling, they can easily fall and smash. And as well as physical injuries that can prevent you from obviously working and, and things, 
so often, especially in more traumatic injuries and like people falling through roofs or suffering like really nasty injuries, there's, there's severe psychological disorders and mental illnesses can be triggered. And I personally don't think the mental impact um, is something that doesn't get the attention it deserves, uh, particularly in fantasy books. And this is what I was sort of suggesting before about like uh, characters who get their arm cut off and the, 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 there they are the next day, one arm less, but still cracking jokes as if they were the same character they were at the very beginning of the story. Now, I think what gave me an insight into this is uh, when I was representing people who were suffering from industrial deafness. And it sounds trivial, but I think it was uh, very under, understated in terms of the impact it had on their lives. And I've spoken to scores of men and women who've spoken about basically how their personalities have changed because they can no longer hear people when they're in like social settings, like family parties or in pubs. And that is one of the effects of um, industrial deafness is that you can't distinguish sounds when you're in busy places, basically hearing's damaged. And as a result, they simply just didn't go out anymore because they were too embarrassed to ask people to repeat themselves or the friends were getting fed up of them asking them to speak up or they started taking the mick out of them. I mean, just imagine like if you're out with your friends and you can't follow a conversation, you just... You, you can't involve yourself. You're, you're basically isolated. And it is massively damaging to a person psychologically, psychologically because you miss out on um, crucial social interactions and you become more insular as a person. Uh, as we know from our chats on sociology in previous episodes, peer groups play such a huge part in, in our lives and in shaping who we are as people. So these things do have massive, massive impacts on people's lives and if you sort of appreciate that, you can create more rounded and lifelike characters. I just want to go back to the sort of accidents at work because there are a lot of people and we create characters and we see characters like this in, in fantasy stories who are immensely proud of their craft and the things that they can do. And it's characters who don't see a, the job as a job, but more as a vocation, as a purpose. And it gives them great uh, satisfaction to do a perfect or brilliant job. You see it with blacksmiths making like amazing swords or gleaming pieces of armor. And if you imagine someone like this, for example, losing a hand or losing a finger and no longer, no longer able to do that job they absolutely love, that was basically their life. It's going to change them in a huge, huge way. And I think to illustrate this, let's have a look at another example. Let's for this for our purposes here, let's imagine a fantasy world and we've got a character who's a master seamstress named Avira. And she's worked hard and devoted herself for twenty odd years to build a business and it's something she's immensely proud of. She has loads of uh, rich and wonderful clients. And but one day she's working on a dress and she has a freak accident and loses the index finger on her right hand which is a dominant hand. Basically, career is over. She has to give up her business. Her whole life, essentially, is over, like as she knew it. Now, just imagine the thoughts and feelings that Avera would be feeling. I mean, how would you feel if you were in that situation? Am I, like you, you're a writer, so imagine if you lost your hand and you could never write again. Would you let it stop you? Or would you carry on? Try and adapt. I mean, we've we're, we've got the the grace of technology now, so something like that we could we can work around. But in a various incidents and in like situation, for example, in classic medieval fantasy setting, is there a way back? And what this incident is in a various life is a major point of conflict, and these are the kind of things that stories often explore. And it's one that she ultimately has to come to terms with, where she she can either try and tackle it and try to overcome it, or succumb to the negative impacts, and it may destroy her. And again, I think that's it's quite an interesting thing to explore, especially on a human and a like sort of characterization level. It just depends on the, the kind of story that you want to tell. I mean, if you've, if you've written an epic fantasy packed with magic and action, then 
you may not need these kind of things, but if you're looking to dive deeper into characters and explore what goes on inside the heads, these things can definitely help. There's another psychological impact to consider. The one that always came up when I was uh, working as a lawyer, and that is a sense of injustice. Now, when people are being injured through absolutely no fault of their own, they may even be fully aware of whose fault it is. They can naturally feel aggrieved and wronged. And in them situations, they may want someone to be held to account to take responsibility for what has happened. And at the very least, they can expect an apology or maybe an offer of recompense, which is where the lawyer usually comes in. But unfortunately, the modern legal world is quite adversarial. Even genuine claimants with serious injuries can be called into question by unscrupulous insurance companies. And that in itself creates more of a battle and can either force claimants usually to do one or two things. And that is either to give up and leave it, walk away, or to fight, dig in and do all you can to win. And I think if we think about these impacts uh, in a fantasy setting, there would be unlikely to be like very little support systems in place, like benefits or sick pay for people who couldn't work. And that in itself would have a greater impact than it would today because, for example, in the UK, if someone suffers an accident at work, they can get a, bene- a form of benefit to cover the pay. Um, and sometimes employers pay sick pay. So it's a completely different setting. So tactics like, which we still see in modern legal systems on the part of defendants to try and delay the claim and just drag it out for as long as possible so that the the injured person loses hope or interest or just decides to give up. That still all goes on. And that would have been 10 times worse back in the day if you imagine what it would have been like in medieval times. There's just like no, no recourse, even though there was like a court system. You can definitely exploit things like that in your, in your fantasy settings. Now, uh, I wanted to move on to explore some of the ways that people can have accidents and the different kind of injuries that they can suffer only with a focus on a fantasy setting. And I'm just going to take the default one that I've mentioned a few times already, which is medieval Europe. Uh, call me boring or whatever, but it's probably the one fantasy trope or cliche or whatever you define it as. And that I would die on a hill for out of love because it's just what I've always grown up with. And it's the the landscape I'm surrounded by. So it's the one I like to write about. And I wanted to just begin with accidents at work because it depends on the type of fantasy story you're writing. There's a lot of fantasy stories that focus on the upper echelons of society and they don't do much but work other than, say, rule. I'm just quite interested in the lives of everyday people because... That is what I know and understand. And people have to work and it's the same for fantasy world. And you can get very creative with the kind of things that people do in a fantasy world. And obviously it's quite relatable to a lot of readers. So this is the kind of stuff that I like to uh, include in my fantasy stories. So to give you an idea, I thought it'd be quite useful to look at some medieval style industries and the types of risks and injuries that could happen in these kind of places. So first, a blacksmith workshop. Always a blacksmith in a fantasy story somewhere along the lines. Um, Now, blacksmiths, back in the day, working around, open fires, very hot metal, heavy items that can crush limbs, and obviously a lot, lot of hammering that can also smash fingers and hands. So there's basically plenty that could do you in here. So if you're looking to inflict an injury on a character then blacksmith workshop is a likely place uh, tanneries is another good one so um, obviously very popular in the middle ages people like a, a good bit of leather but these are quite nasty places first of all quite offensive to the senses imagine the smell lots of dry and flesh that has been cut, cut away from animals and Usually carcasses knocking about and then you've got monkey water because all this 
all these um, hides have to be washed in in water. The process is also pretty toxic. It uses a what it did back in the day use a chemical compound called tannin, which is derived from tree bark and certain leaves of plants. And people could get sick, and they can contract contract like serious illnesses like cancers and same goes for modern day uh, tanneries as well. Nothing's really improved. We're also uh, commonplace for like slaughterhouses and abattoirs. And you can imagine back in the Middle Ages, these were pretty brutal, primitive places. There wasn't anything like today where the animals were obviously killed very quickly and hopefully without them feeling any pain. But back in the day, it was just stunning, however way you can. Apparently, pole axes we we used and they were the most effective, but they didn't always work. So it was just a matter of knocking it out and and then slaughtering the animal then. But in that process, you've got the risk of animals lashing out, kicking, inflicting injuries. So imagine putting down a bull, for example. Bull's not going to go down without a fight. And then you've also got cutting injuries, like in the butchering process. So, yeah, again, lots of risks there. Fisheries is another one. Um, again, this is this remains one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. And it's all because the sea is a merciless beast. And... People could easily lose their lives, especially back in medieval times. Uh, as well, there's lots of ways to suffer nasty injuries, like slippery floors for one. So you can get broken bones, fractures, sprains, ligament tears, whatever. And if you're stuck on a ship without proper care and attention, wounds can get affected, injuries may not heal correctly, and characters could be left with, say, limps or uneven gaits. So knock-on effects there. How's that going to affect the rest of the lives? Construction is another big industry that a lot of uh, injuries happen in. And I think to get a real sense of the scale of of what can go wrong in construction, if look beyond the Middle Ages to uh, the ancient Egyptians and how they built the pyramids. And there was insane risks involved for the people who did that, well, were forced to do them jobs. Many of them were slaves. In them kind of settings, people could fall from heights. You've got scaffolding, very sort of not like scaffolding as we know it. So just imagine like it's all made of wood and <clears throat> people can easily fall. It's heavy objects being lifted using ropes and stuff like that. I mean, ropes can fray over time and accidents can and they do always happen. And one of the most common types of accidents is like manual handling, so lifting and carrying things. People can pull muscles on the back. You can get hernias. You can get slip discs, which is like sort of bul- bulges in your in your vertebrae. So these are all risks and the types of injuries that you can suffer in construction. And lastly, farming. Uh, always a lot of risks from farming. Animals themselves. Um, and you're working with blades and sharp objects and, again, heavy things like bales of hay and stuff like that. So, again, a lot of ways you can get injured. Something that may give you a few more ideas for how accidents could happen is to look at the latest statistics of workplace accidents. And these are published by the UK's Health and Safety Executive. So very solid. I use them in my day job. So it's all reliable. Um, And in the HSE's annual statistics, they list the top five um, causes of accidents at work. And I think if you bear these kind of things in mind, it can give you a bit of an idea of how you could introduce some accidents in your fantasy workplaces or to explain how characters have got different injuries. So the most common accidents with 30% of all accidents at work are slips, trips and falls. Now this could be someone tripping over a chunk of metal in a blacksmith shop or slipping over some offal in an abattoir. You can suffer quite nasty injuries from slips, trips and falls as well. So you can crack your head open on a rock, land on something sharp. It's all pretty nasty and unpredictable business. And another common cause is uh, manual handling. So I mentioned before, like lifting things. Sometimes we see scenes where um, it's like forced labor camps or the slaves are, are being forced to, to work and they just seem to be able to go on, go on, go on until they die. But 
before you get to that stage of, of dying, you, you're probably going to suffer some kind of injury. And that doesn't that ever really seem to feature. And that, again, that, that's something that you can play on because um, it cre- creates conflict. And if, imagine if you've got the sort of whoever's in charge, a sort of says, well, you're responsible for this person's work if they can't do it. That, that creates conflict in itself because it puts a burden on other people. There's another area of law that could be relevant in a fantasy world, and that is medical negligence. Back in the medieval period, the understanding of medicine was a bit limited, it's fair to say, and that may differ in your fantasy world for better or worse. But if it's the latter, you could add even more conflict into your tale by complicating the treatment your character receives for their initial injury. So let's take a look at an extreme example. And this is a genuine, this was what genuinely happened. So at one time in history, there was a, a practice. I think it originally dates back to prehistoric times. Um, but it's a medical practice known as trepenning or trappening, however you pronounce it. And it essentially involved drilling a hole into the skull of the person. Um, at one time, it was probably, uh, the main belief was the reason was to release the demons consuming their minds but these poor people weren't possessed and they were suffering from mental illnesses and psychological disorders and they just were so poorly understood that they thought it would be better to lobotomize them by drilling a hole in the forehead so most of the time these these un, like unfortunate people were killed that's just an example of how the medical treatments people can receive don't always work out Beyond that, wounds may fester, limbs may be lost as a result, broken bones may not get properly set and may worsen and lead to limps and changes in gaits like we mentioned before. Illnesses may not get treated or may be treated with ineffective and speculative medicines and that may lead people to get even worse in their conditions. I think when you're dealing with this medieval type setting, it's helpful to remember that nothing is really certain. A person may survive an initial injury Uh, for example it might just be like a a shallow cut on the leg but if it doesn't get treated or it doesn't heal properly they may not yet make it and as a writer that is a well of conflict that you can draw from yeah so they suffer they suffer a minor injury but they say everyone thinks they're going to be okay but then you throw another little spanner in the works and keep the reader guessing and when we're talking about these these kind of things, I'm not by any means suggesting that all of your characters have to undergo some kind of accident or suffer some kind of injury. But what I found is sprinkling details inspired by what I've discussed throughout your story really can bring or help bring it, your fantasy world to life. For example, if the, the shady guy sitting in the corner of the local tavern goes by the name of One-Handed Oscar, we're automatically a little bit intrigued as to how he got that name. More so anyway than if he was just called Oscar. And the fact that we've given him this interesting name gives us an, an excuse and a reason to indulge in a little bit of world building. So we can explain a war that Oscar may have fought in or an accident he may have had while working as a blacksmith in a shop that made the best swords in the world, for example. And we've got a reason because the reader wants to know. I do think these little details work really well for secondary characters, but they also work really well for your main characters as well. And at the beginning, I spoke about conflict and how it fuels a story. So introducing an injury perhaps from an accident at work would be a great way to inject a massive amount of conflict in your story. And although this doesn't have much to do with law and what we've spoken about but i think a really good example of this is jamie lannister in game of thrones losing his sword hand and the challenges it poses to his very identity and that's what you can really sort of experiment with when it comes to your character suffering massive injuries i suppose in conclusion what this lawyer perspective considers above all or encourages you to think about is what happens after someone gets hurt So often we focus on the incidents and we decline or don't really go into 
much detail on the consequences. But so often, the greatest conflicts can be found in the repercussions. And that is what I always saw as a lawyer. It was my job. I was there to help them rebuild their lives and try to right the wrongs that they'd been subjected to, as well as get a bit of compensation, of course. But these recoveries and the journeys that people went went on or go through are tough. And applying them to a fantasy setting just multiplies the, the difficulties tenfold. So... Personally, I think it's a wonderful source of conflict for stories. It's a great way to show the harsh realities of your fantasy world as well. And I think it, it, by sprinkling these details and showing that people in your world are working, they're living, and um, they're getting hairs, it shows the reason that you've really thought about things and it injects life and makes your world feel really alive. So there we have it, a, a little piece about my perspective working as a lawyer and how that has influenced my fantasy writing, I suppose. And yeah, it might, you might find that useful. If anything, I, th- I think it's really helpful when it comes to secondary characters. Like I said at the end there, you can just show the reader that your world is alive and the characters who ha- inhabit it uh, have got things going on in their own lives too. There's own, they've got their own stories and we want to know about it. If you enjoyed today's episode, give us a subscribe or follow so you don't miss any more episodes. We've got lots of great topics lined up, lots of awesome guests as well, a lot of interesting things in the works. So to make sure you don't miss anything, hit that subscribe or follow button. If you really enjoyed this episode and would like to support us, please consider sharing on social media or with anyone you think may be interested. And also head over to our Patreon page where as well as supporting us and helping us build to a point where we can do more regular episodes. You can also gain access to writing classes, writing books, interviews, guides, and a whole lot more. And that is it for today. Thank you very much for listening. We'll be back on the 28th of Feb with a brand new episode. And until then, keep on scribbling.